Hello, Astro people. So we have now several of the coordinate system transformations that we're looking for. Let's work another one. Let's work the transformation between celestial equatorial coordinates to ecliptic coordinates. So to pass from equatorial to ecliptic coordinates, let's again draw the coordinates for a specific object. For the equatorial coordinates, again, you have the vernal point, find the right ascension along the equator, and the declination from the equator to the star. For the ecliptic coordinates, you have from the vernal point to the ecliptic longitude, and from the ecliptic to the star, the ecliptic latitude. So the triangle that you draw is the triangle going from the star to the north celestial pole to the north ecliptic pole. So let's draw the elements of this triangle and work out the trigonometry. So this is the triangle. We have the star in here, the north celestial pole in here, and the north ecliptic pole in here. The sides are from the star to the north celestial pole, that's 90 minus the declination. From the star to the north ecliptic pole is 90 minus the ecliptic latitude. And from the ecliptic pole to the celestial pole, it's the inclination of the ecliptic with respect to the equator. That's called the epsilon. Now we need to find the angles. As we can see here from the figure, this angle is the right ascension. So where the arcs meet, you have here also the right ascension. And this other angle here is a right angle. So this angle in here, with the vertex at the north celestial pole is 90 plus the right ascension. The other angle, which is the angle centered at the north ecliptic pole, is 90 minus the ecliptic longitude. And you can see that by seeing that this is the ecliptic longitude, which is the same angle then as the intersection between the two circles. So this is the ecliptic longitude. Therefore, this angle here, which we would complete 90 degrees, is 90 minus lambda. So these are our sides. A is equal to 90 minus beta, B is equal to epsilon, C is equal to 90 minus delta, and the angles are big A is equal to 90 plus alpha, and big C is equal to 90 minus delta. Why in the fundamental law of cosine, we have the sine beta is equal to cosine epsilon sine delta minus sine epsilon cosine delta sine alpha. Applying now the law of the sines, we have cosine beta cosine lambda is equal to cosine delta times cosine alpha. And applying the arc and angle formula, we have cosine beta sine lambda is equal to sine epsilon sine delta plus cosine epsilon, cosine delta sine alpha. And conversely, you can use the same equations if you want to know the opposite, if you want to pass from ecliptic coordinate to equatorial. In this case, the equations would be applying to cosine little c instead of using them for the cosine a little way. The second equation of the law of sines is the same. Just flip the right-hand side and the left-hand side. And the third equation is the arc and angle formula, again, for the little c. One interesting application of these equations is that we can immediately set the ecliptic latitude to be zero to find the equatorial coordinates of the sun. By definition, the sun is in the ecliptic, so its latitude is zero. With that, the equations are sine delta is equal to sine epsilon sine lambda, cosine alpha cosine delta is equal to cosine lambda, and sine alpha cosine delta is equal to cosine epsilon sine lambda. 
Now, to lead in order, the sun's motion in the ecliptic longitude can be parametrized as uniform. It goes about 360 degrees over 365 days, that leads to about 59 minutes and 11 seconds per day. So we can write lambda as a function of time is equal to approximately 0 0.986 degree per day, multiplied by the timing days. where the time in days is measured from the time since the vernal equinox, which is when the sun is at zero ecliptic longitude. If you plug this equation for lambda as a function of time into the three equations that we just derived, you have the right ascension and the declination of the sun as a function of time. Notice that we can find the rate at which the sun increases its declination if we take the derivative of the first equation. So if we take the derivative with respect to time on both sides, you have on the right hand side minus cosine delta delta prime, and on the left hand side you have minus sine epsilon cosine lambda lambda prime. So delta prime is equal to sine epsilon cosine lambda cosine delta lambda prime. So this is zero whenever cosine lambda is equal to zero. That is, when lambda is equal to either 90 degrees or 270 degrees. At this point, the sun stops and turns around. So these are the solstices from lighting sol, sun, and sister to halt. The declination of the sun at the solstices, you see if cosine lambda is equal to 90 or 270, we can immediately put that into the first equation to find that delta of the sun and the solstices is going to be plus or minus epsilon. So these lines of declination define the tropics from the Greek trope to turn. The tropics are the parallels of declination where the solstice has happened. And it's easy to see this geometrically. You have here the celestial equator in orange and the ecliptic in red. The tropics are defined here where the sun reaches its maximum declination. Right? The sun is rising here from the vernal equinox, reaches the solstice, here, this is the parallel where the solstice happened. That's the tropic. The sun descends, goes to the autumn equinox, and then goes down to the winter solstice. This parallel where the winter solstice happens defines the other tropic. From our point of view, what do we see? We see the equinox, the sun, and the celestial equator. Imagine that this is an observer at 40 degree latitude. Equator is here, raised by 50 degrees. And the summer solstice, the sun is at its maximum declination, 23.5 degrees beyond the celestial equator. And on the winter solstice, the sun is its, at its southernmost point of minus epsilon of the celestial equator.